Hello, welcome to Ra El Bull. I'm a professional astrologer and holistic wellness practitioner. Thank you so much for choosing to spend precious minutes of your time with me today. This is the general astrology overview for January 2024. I'm your host and guide, Ephemera. This is part one of the January 2024 general astrology. If you haven't already watched the short top level overview for the month, I recommend you do that because it provides essential context. In this part, I'm going to focus on the Earth trines and the Capricorn new moon on January 11. Trines are 120 degree angles between objects such as planets, asteroids, or calculated astrological points and are the most harmonious and beneficial aspect that two objects can make. January features numerous trines between planets or linked to planets and Earth signs, particularly Taurus and Capricorn. These angles are foundation building angles and are generators of super productivity and material manifestation. Let's walk through the month observing four key transits and influences more or less in chronological order. And then we'll examine the Capricorn new moon on the 11th. Number one, Mercury stations direct at 22 degrees Sagittarius on January 2nd at 8.37 p.m. Pacific. Mercury is the ruler of Earth sign Virgo and makes trines with both Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus this month. This is the second to last chapter in Mercury's 22-7 mystical Kazemi retrograde I spoke about in December. It's notable here that Mercury stations direct first at 22 degrees and second that he does so in lunar mansion Jayeshta, the wisdom crone. That mansion is a feminine, a psychic, occult power mansion ruled by Mercury that shares space with the heart of the scorpion, the great red supergiant Antares. Jayeshta is a place of dark wisdom and deep mysticism, not far from the galactic center at 27 degrees Sagittarius in the tropical. Number two, Mars enters Capricorn on the fourth. Mercury and Mars are working up to a conjunction at the end of the month on the 27th. So we'll see that Mars too trines both Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. On the 4th, Mars enters the sign of his exaltation, Capricorn, which means he's in his fullest and highest expression. This is an excellent time for taking action, executing on plans, bold steps, advancement in projects, especially Saturnian field projects, such as banking, government, institutions, and politics. Also favored are big action directed towards or complementary to the Saturnian dynamics, discipline, training, rulemaking, regulations, compliance, constraints, timekeeping, deadline setting, etc. Saturn is now in Pisces, which is associated with unity, spirituality, imagination, art, illusion, fantasy, and also confusion and delusion on the downside. The ideal intersection here then with these planets in, and this sign is bold energetic action that is disciplined, orthodox, and orderly, consistent with spiritual values and creativity. Mars is here in Capricorn until the 10th of next month. Number three, Mars sextiles Saturn on the 9th. This is going to be a hyper amplification of Mars in Capricorn because Saturn is Capricorn's ruler. If you ha happen to be involved with things in that sweet spot intersection I just described, this is very advantageous. However, use caution here because Mercury squares Neptune the day before on the 8th. Looking ahead later in the month on the 19th, Venus will form the same square with Neptune. I'll speak more about that square in the video on January's Venusian magic. For the Mercury-Neptune square on the 8th, remember that hard aspects like square
which involve the thinking planets, Mercury, Uranus, and Jupiter primarily, promote poor thinking, poor communication, and in Mercury's case, short-term travel and mobility problems as well. These transits are fertile ground for confusion and delusion and errors, as well as travel problems, delays, and mishaps. So be mindful around the eighth, particularly if the Mars, Capricorn, Saturn, Pisces energies are driving you to be assertive or make major moves. Number four, the Capricorn sun trines Uranus in Taurus on the ninth. This is the month's first Earth trine. If we've been careful with the Mercury-Neptune square shadow aspects, we can expect blessings on the Mars and Capricorn action we took in recent days. Also, Taurian fields and undertakings are blessed. Beauty, love, money, design, food, flowers, fashion, pleasure, sensuality, especially if novel or shocking, individualistic, inventive, or electromagnetic, or involve the sky, space, astron astronomy, or astrology. All of those latter qualities and characteristics are Uranian. So to recap, in the month's first 10 days, we have Mercury and Mars getting their game on and the sun injecting the first blast of Earth energy into Taurus. Uranus is retrograde at this time, and he's going direct 17 days after the sun's trine. So this harmonic and illuminating embrace is like someone in your house turning on the lights in the bedroom and starting the coffee brewing as you navigate your way out of a hypnagogic sleep state. Now let's talk about the divine feminine new moon on the 11th. The day after the Earth trine between the Sun and Uranus, the Capricorn Sun conjuncts the Moon. This Capricorn new moon, robed in calendar day number 11 at 21 degrees and occurring in the feminine cardinal Earth sign Capricorn, bears a divine feminine and auspicious bearing. Here's, here's why. It occurs in Nakshatra Purva Ashada, which is tied to Venus and Lakshmi, both of which are highly beneficent female deities. Second, 11 is the number of higher self activations of ascension consciousness and spiritual awakening. And third, the new moon squares the lunar north node at 21 degrees, situated in Ravati, which is ruled by Mercury and is also associated with the, the blessed Hindu goddess Lakshmi. So there we have it. The month of rolling thunder earth trines has just begun, and the divine feminine Capricorn new moon graces our world on sacred number 1-11-2024. Numerologists will be quick to note that one plus one plus one plus two plus zero plus two plus four equals 11, making this day an especially powerful gateway for raising consciousness and achieving new levels of higher self embodiment. I hope you found this information inspiring and useful. Part two in this series will delve more deeply into the earth trines that we've just touched on. This video has provided some broad and generalized advice based upon the general astrological aspects and influences for the month. If you'd like customized and focused astrological advice about a particular issue, event, or undertaking of any kind, please contact me using the information below. You can even place an order directly on my site for natal chart preparation at three different tier levels designed to accommodate any budget or electional astrology chart services to help you choose the proper and best times for that important matter or key event you're planning in your life. In addition to natal chart and electional chart services, I also provide general consultations for spirituality, health and wellness, and career. You can also schedule time for a one-to-one -one consultation with me on my site. 
Finally, if you're interested in participating in a Divine Feminine Christ Higher Self activation, I'm a certified Sophia Circle Journey leader who conducts both live in the Los Angeles area and virtual slash online circles. Instructions for joining one of my circles can be found on my site on the services page. Thank you again for spending your time with me today. Ra'el Bolt.